Hi, I'm David Moskowitz, and we're here with the Chief Commercial Officer of Aveo Pharmaceuticals, Michael Bailey. Michael, thanks for speaking with us. Thank you. So the company has three products in the clinic, one about to be filed with the FDA. Can you talk a little bit about the human response platform that helps you generate drugs and how that's differentiated in the marketplace? Sure, great question. The uh, human response platform is a proprietary platform that Aveo was actually founded on. Um, the platform is a little different than the Xenograph models, which are typically used to, to er test early drugs, in that the Xenografts take a tumor and they mount it on the flank of, of a mouse, and that tumor grows in a, in a very uh, singular cellular way. Um, our platform, in, in contrast, is a genetically engineered mouse model that ultimately uh, mimics the human tumor growth much more naturally. So we can identify uh, possible mechanisms for escape of current drugs, or we can find new pathways to target to effectively uh, produce anti-cancer therapies. So it's a, in a, way, a way for more effectively modeling uh, human disease and finding treatments. Absolutely, and in an era of personalized medicine, having the ability to use biomarkers, and, and we can do that very effectively through this model, uh, we feel is a very important competitive advantage. Well, the industry certainly appreciates that technology. Uh, Tivozinib is your lead drug candidate and clearly a major driver for Aveo shares. Can you review for us the pivotal phase three trial, I believe it's called TiVo1, and how you think the drug can compete in a very crowded market, that's the treatments for, for kidney cell cancer. We're very excited about, uh, we're just coming off of ASCO, where we presented all the details of, of TiVo1, which was a first, uh, first line study that compared an active agent against an approved active targeted agent. So uh, it's an important study from that perspective. The data was even more exciting. Um, we showed longer than a year in progression-free survival, 12.7 months, in patients who had uh, no prior treatment in a metastatic setting. This is the longest PFS that's been demonstrated in this space, but that's not it. The, the combination of that uh, longest PFS with a safety profile that's remarkable in this population really offers patients something uh, much more than what they've had with the current therapies in, in this space. Yeah, safety and efficacy clearly is a differentiator in the market. It seems that you guys have the number one product. So what is the expected timeline for filing an approval of tivozinib? So we expect to file uh, for tivozinib approval in the third quarter of 2012. And considering uh, your average 10-month uh, review process, we expect to be launching in 2013. With regard to your partnership with Astellas, uh, what kind of economics do you get from tivozinib and when do you think Aveo could become a profitable company? Good question. Um, the economics in the Estellas deal are, are uh, very generous for uh, Aveo as well as Estellas. Uh, it's a 50-50 split uh, on a worldwide basis. So we have 50% profit profits in the US as well as 50% profits in Europe. Um, importantly, Aveo is leading the commercialization in North America and Estellas is leading the commercialization in Europe. Uh, but again, because we split uh, the profits on, the, on this deal, it's a true marriage. And you're the chief commercial officer, so you have the responsibility yes, of building sir. the team. Yes, sir. And we're right. in the process of doing that right now. Excellent. So tyrosine kinase inhibitors like tivozinib often target multiple indications. Besides kidney cancer, what other indications are, are most important based on the studies that the company has run? Yeah, great question, David, because the, the, there's a huge opportunity that's untapped right now in the marketplace, and that is the VEGF TKIs that have been um, uh, to date developed have not been able to go very effectively beyond uh, RCC into many of the large market spaces like colorectal and breast cancer. And the reason for that is because their safety profiles required them to have to go into uh, large phase three studies with lower doses. What we've shown with tivozinib is that it's well tolerated as a single agent, as we demonstrated in TiVo1, but it's also well tolerated in combination with chemotherapy, which is uh, are really the hallmarks of many of these larger tumor types like colorectal and breast cancer. And what we showed is that we could actually combine tivozinib at full dose and full strength uh, our full schedule uh, in those settings. 
So what we've done with that information is we've moved into what we call uh, Baton CRC, Baton standing for Biomarker Assessment of Tavozinib in Oncology, where we're again leveraging our human response platform to give us a competitive advantage in that space. And so we're going head to head with the standard of care in a phase two study. We'll be moving forward in a similar way uh, in breast cancer. And the, the beauty of the baton component of it is that we'll be looking at biomarkers so that we can identify those patient population and those, those pathways that are critical to uh, success of the drug. The compounds that are in this space, Sutent uh, from Pfizer, which is a leading product, and Onyx Nexavar, Onyx and Bayer, um, these are billion dollar compounds. Do you think Tavozinib has that type of potential? Yeah, I, I think that Tavozinib has a significant opportunity to be a, 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 an important standard in the first line of RCC. We've shown head-to-head -head versus serafinib that we're superior on efficacy and, and a very favorable safety profile. Um, as far as Sutton, you, you uh, correctly identify that they are the market leader. Um, one thing that Sutton has is uh, recognized toxicities. And uh, with our longest PFS combined with a, a toxicity profile that these patients, and I'll make an important point, these patients are, RCC patients are roughly 50 years old, is the average age, um, usually male, they're active. It's important for them to have quality of life. And this next era of drug development, especially in RCC, I think is gonna shift focus from, you just have to have uh, efficacy, it's gotta to hurt to work, and move to, to the idea of, it's really important to not only have efficacy, but also to have safety so that these patients who are fighting this very difficult disease have a good quality of daily living. So it's the safety profile and also potentially the longest PFS, which is progression free. Yeah, it's free absolutely the combination of the two. And you know, having the longest PFS puts us in a great place to shift the focus to safety. Given that you've kept good control over the Tivozinib asset and a good portion of the economics, what if Estellas wants to own the asset outright? Do you, what are your thoughts and the company's thoughts about a takeout? Yeah, so our goal as a company is to uh, become a, a long-term, fully integrated biopharmaceutical company. And so, although I can't speculate on takeout, the contract does uh, stipulate a standstill period, and we believe that through the process of developing um, many of our pipeline drugs, as well as advancing to Vosinib, the valuation for the company could be uh, significant and therefore would be a difficult thing to do. Is your strategy with the platform to focus on specific disease areas? I, I think we're opportunistically looking at the, uh, the opportunities that, that our biomarker platform, our human response platform can direct us to. So we're, we're really being led by the science. Okay. And talk about your next most advanced compound, Ficlituzumab. Are you going to continue developing that in non-small cell lung cancer? Absolutely. We actually have just signed a, a large manufacturing agreement with BI, and that is intended to support us in our, our further future development for, for that drug. Uh, we're very excited about the prospects of this drug. We showed some early phase two data that showed some biomarker populations where uh, there appears to be some good activity. We'll look to further confirm that in future clinical stu studies, as well as look into other tumor types like head and neck, which we just announced we would be uh, moving forward in. Right, the non smell cell lung cancer is tricky, but there could be some sure, subpopulations in which yeah. it works. Um, and on the head and neck cancer trials, can you give us an update on, on where the compound stands? For the for ficlituzumab? ficlituzumab? We'll be starting that study later this year, and we're very encouraged and excited to see how the drug performs there. That's a phase two? Yes. Your other early stage compound, AV203, you're a partner, your partner is Biogen. Can you talk a little bit about the prospects for that compound, what it is, and how is the relationship going with Biogen? Yeah, so the Biogen partnership is, is unique, and once again, we've retained a, a significant portion of the, of the asset. Actually, they have an option for Europe post phase two. So we're doing the early development. We just announced that we started our phase one, and we're very excited about that. Um, so the, the prospects for the drug are multiple tumors. Um, solid tumors, many solid tumors express RB3, and so we'll be looking at those, uh, those important tumor types. Great. And can you talk a little bit about your balance sheet? Uh, where is the cash position now and what kind of uh, cash burn 
uh, is the company expected to have this year? Yeah, we're in a, in a very good position from a, a balance sheet perspective. I think we've guided the street to say $120 million is what we're ending the year. Um, we've got a couple milestones coming up that are tied to um, uh, filing in U.S., North America, as well as EMA, um, and then ultimately approval with those two. Is Ficlituzumab a partnered product? Ficlituzumab is 100% owned by Aveo. So um, again, once again, we, we've retained a large part of our assets. And is that something for which we could see a partnership sometime later this year? Um, there's always a possibility for partnerships. I think our, our philosophy and strategy has been not to pun, partner for financial needs, but f finding the right strategic partnership. So one could m might envision a partnership in Asia with Ficlituzumab, where mutations in non-small cell lung are, are pr pretty uh, prevalent um, and where we, we don't intend to build a commercial organization. Great. As we wrap up, let's talk about the key events that are expected to drive the shares over the next couple of quarters. Yeah, obviously the, the filing and ultimate uh, approval of the drug is going to be an important milestone. Um, we'll be kicking off the head and neck study with Ficlituzumab. Um, over the course of the next year to two years, we'll be seeing some data from AV203. So lots of exciting things coming up for Tavozinib, and uh, we're very encouraged by the opportunity. Great. Michael Bailey from Aveo, thank you so much for joining. Thank you, David.